Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. Welcome back to my channel. Here we are doing the monthly or the mid-month love readings. This is going to be for all the zodiac signs, starting with Aries, ending with Pisces, as you guys already know. For those of you guys back to my channel, welcome. For those of you guys new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. We have tons of spell videos going up. Uh, for those of you guys that are into the practice or wanting to learn more, we have uh, easy, very quick, effective love spells, uh, money spells, abundance spells, uh, protection spells. We have all of that going up as well as for those of you guys that are at more advanced. Um, so we are going to be very, very active in this channel this year. Uh, tons of spell videos, like I said, and uh, readings. So Let's get into it. For those of you guys that are interested in personal consultations, you can find that information on the description box below our online store where you can um, schedule you guys' appointments or spell work. If you're interested in personal spell work, we now have open calendar um, kicking off the year strong, you guys. So let's get into it. This is going to be we're going to begin here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. In regards to love and romance, we're going to look into new love first. Spirit guides, ancestors, archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to new love, give me three cards. Give me three cards that represents how they see Aries, how they feel about Aries, and the future actions towards Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, definitely like, comment below. Let me know what type of spells you guys are looking forward for this year. Comment below. Let me know. As you guys know, I give you what you guys want. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. Aries, how they see you. Temperance. So they see you as a very strong individual. Your energy comes on, uh, comes off very healing. Um, for some of you guys, almost even angelic. Uh, if you can see here in this card, he's holding two different, uh, the moon and the sun. So a bit of an, a, a bit of a enigma is what uh, really interests them about you. It's like you're very difficult um, or very not easy to read. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that they're feeling a bit nervous. Perhaps you're not, um, they're not used to dealing with someone that puts up a bit of a challenge. Um, they're trying to figure you out right now, Aries. Now, how they feel about you is the Knight of Pentacles. So it's going to take progressively. I feel like for some of you guys, especially if you just started to deal with this person, you may feel like things are going progressively slow, but that's not necessarily a negative thing. Um, because obviously pentacles does indicate solidifying. It, it, it's a process. It's kind of like when you're uh, in the process of soap making, right? There is a process of having the need to wait for the chemicals to mesh well with the water and oils in order to, uh, in order for it to become um, a more consistent uh you know, so I can create the tracing. So again, I feel like you guys are in a positive, um, positive way building or taking your time in getting to know each other. Now, in regards to their future actions towards you here, we have the moon card. So the moon card does indicate a bit of feeling a bit anxious because they are not sure if you are as interested as they are with you. Um, the moon, <coughs> excuse me, the moon card can also represent um, feeling a bit, feeling a bit stuck in this situation, not necessarily with you, but in a situation, because we do have temperance here. I feel like this person that you may be dealing with could have came out of a relationship or perhaps is still in the process of healing um, some point or at some point in the end of this month, if you feel like they are a bit detached or perhaps pulling away or perhaps not communicating as well could be because they are in their emotions right now um and it is directly to, in connection with someone from the past because we do have temperance here and this is indicating to me uh, a healing phase or going through a healing which has been a very long process for them um the moon is not necessarily a negative card this can also indicate 
This can also indicate intuition. It can indicate um, having the desire, having the desire to come out of a situation where they were overwhelmed. Perhaps they are detaching emotionally. Um, so when we're talking about how you can expect this to progress as the month goes on, I feel like there's going to be a bit of a bit of little obstacles in the way in regards to communication and just know uh, th that if they are pulling away or not as accessible, it could particularly be because <clears throat> they are still working on being able to fully move on from someone. So if you're dealing with someone recently and you feel like they start to talk or bring up an ex or something like that, just know that if you if that's kind of triggering you in a way, uh, perhaps keep it moving um, because obviously it's showing that this person is not completely fully healed um, and we don't want to deal with people that are not ready, uh, especially as it progresses and it gets, you know, your connection with them gets stronger. Um, you don't want to be falling for someone that is not emotionally available to you. Um, so again, like I said, keep an eye out for that. If you feel like they are not being consistent or like, for some of you guys, they may even ask you to give them some time. When that comes up in this month, definitely give them their time, but don't sit there and wait for them. Move on, uh, date, go out. Um, don't waste your time on someone that is not mentally prepared to get themselves into a relationship if that's what you want, okay? Now we're going to go into the old flame, old relationship or ex-partner. For Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Give me three cards that represents their old flame or part, old partner or ex-partner. How do they feel about Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? How do they uh, feel? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions towards Aries? Ex-partner, ex-lover. Okay, here we go. So the first card here is the Six of Cups. I feel like they still haven't moved on. Uh, they're definitely still in their emotions or feelings about you. Uh, they may be contemplating uh, reaching out or communicating. King of Cups, I feel like at some point they could have been emotionally detached or emotionally unavailable, um, whereas now they're looking back. And they're looking back in retrospect, realizing or understanding that perhaps uh, the relationship didn't work out because perhaps they weren't emotionally available or they didn't do enough in the relationship or in the connection. And I do have here the tower. So I'm going to be honest, Aries, I feel like you're definitely going to be hearing from your ex. They're definitely going to be reaching out. That's if they haven't already. I feel like they're getting to a point of, it's almost like getting to that aha moment where they realize really what, what they did wrong and they're willing to take that responsibility and they're wanting to make it right or they're wanting to come back into your life or they're wanting um to connect with you to to connect i feel like they're missing you you guys can see here there is a, a boat at a distance it's almost like for some of you guys you could be picking up on their energy maybe you're dreaming about them Maybe they're coming to mind lately. And the reason is because they cannot stop thinking of you, Aries. So you're definitely going to be hearing from them. The tower does indicate um, getting to the culmination um, uh, of something that happens very drastically. And it was very unexpected. I feel like they are definitely getting to the point of enlightenment. Um, enlightenment in the sense of realizing, like taking self-responsibility for what they did or they didn't do in this connection, in this relationship. And because they are open-hearted, it means that they're going to want uh, to do right by you or they're wanting to come back into your life, okay? So just be ready for that, Aries. All right, <clears throat> now let's go to Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Let's look into their new love. How do they see them? How do they feel about Taurus and what is their future actions towards Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, new love? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, new love. How do they see Taurus? How do they feel about Taurus and what is their future actions? All right, here we go. Taurus, first card, Four of Wands. The desire of wanting to solidify something. So if you've recently been dating, uh, been uh, communicating or going out with someone casually, 
they're definitely contemplating uh, solidifying this connection or wanting to build something. Um, most of the time when the Four of Wands does uh, show up, they're definitely contemplating making it serious or making it official. Now, the next card here, we have the Emperor card. So the Emperor card does indicate um, things that are more structured. So there is definitely contemplation of wanting to take it to the next level or a contemplation of solidifying the connection or relationship becoming, like I said, um, becoming more, uh, more official, making it public, going out in public and, you know, making it official, basically. Um, I do see that there is, <clears throat> there is a bit of, um, a desire of wanting to move forward um, because as you can see here, the emperor is looking towards the four of wands, which indicates to me the contemplation, uh, the thinking, the mulling over. Um, but I also see <coughs> what's standing out a lot to me is the emperor's holding something here. So I feel like they're contemplating the stability or how far this relationship or connection is going to go, but they still haven't completely released something or hold, they're holding on to something. Let's figure that out. We have the Ten of Swords. Okay, so the Ten of Swords does indicate to me that this person that you're dealing with um, uh, has ended a cycle, has completed some type of cycle where perhaps in the past it was difficult for them to release or let go or move on emotionally. But I feel that right now um, they are in a mental space and in an emotional place where they're ready to set off on a new journey and open themselves up emotionally to build something or to start something new so amazing reading for you Taurus that are dealing with someone new now let's go to your old flame Taurus sun when rising Venus old flame see what's going on with Taurus old flame their ex or ex-partner ex-lover how do they feel about Taurus why do they feel that way and what is their future actions for Taurus for it all right, here we go. <laughs> All right, we have the three of swords, um, pain, um, deception. I feel like they're definitely not moved on from you, Taurus. They're still holding on to, they're still holding on to the pain of releasing or the pain of letting go. I'm hearing for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with the person that was very narcissistic or a person that was very selfish. Um, they assumed or thought that you would always be there. Because as you can see here at a distance, there is a tree and the branches. And trees and branches are a representation of something that solidified and became or gave birth to roots. Um, which is a something that goes deep, right? And I feel like for some of you guys, they had a very toxic way or a very distorted way of showing love. Um, it's kind of the situation where a person takes you for granted or they don't appreciate you or they you know, lie, deceive you, cheat on you, etc. Um, but then when you leave them, it's like, why are you leaving me? I thought you loved me type of thing. Um, so I feel like they're still dealing with that. They're still dealing with the fact that they weren't expecting for you to not be there or not be able to support them. Um, it's almost like they're feeling like you're leaving them, abandoning them type of thing. Um, Ten of Cups does indicate to me, like I said, the distorted something that came through very strongly, they have a distorted way of showing love and they've realized or come to the realization that they're going through this pain and through this difficulty because they feel like perhaps before you, they never felt like they loved them, like they were accepted or they were loved genuinely. Ten of Cups is being able to look back and realize this was my happiness or this was my happy, happy place or this was the person um, that loved me and loved me in, in, in a good way. Um, so that's the reason why the pain is still there. Uh, Knight of Wands, I do see them reaching out to you, Taurus. I do see them wanting to communicate. Uh, for some of you guys, you will be hearing from them. I feel like with the Three of Swords, though, um, like I said, it, it's almost like it's giving me the energy of they do all of this to you and then they sit back and you know, question you when you're ready to move on, like you're leaving me, you're abandoning me. Um, like they're the ones that are hurt. And 
not acknowledging, not accepting the pain that they've caused you. So I do see communication happening, uh, Taurus, but my advice would be to close the chapter in that and move on um, because I feel like there's no self actualization here. There's no self, um, <clears throat> there's no self, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It completely went blank, you guys. Um, self-responsibility for, for what they did in the relationship and what they caused. It's almost like they're pointing the finger at you that you're leaving them when they need you the most. Um, so it, it, it's giving me vibes or energy of manipulation. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love, we're going to look into their new love. How do they see Gemini? How do they feel about Gemini? And what is their future actions towards Gemini? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, we have the full card. Full card is new beginnings. Uh, exciting. Uh, possibilities are endless here. Maybe dealing with um, maybe dealing with a fire energy and air energy. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. <clears throat> now the next card here is the death card. So there is a transformation that's happening here. I feel like for some of you guys, uh, you're going through this ending cycle. For some of you guys, you could have recently broken up, and this person recently came up or showed up into your life. Um, the death card always, <laughs> and it can also represent a Scorpio, but I feel like it has more to do with energy. And the energy here is letting go of the past or not letting the past hold you back because the future that you have has no boundaries. Um, so my advice would be for those of you guys that are recently dealing with someone, um, there is progressively something that is, I feel like they're showing up in your life right when you're ending some type of cycle. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be ending the cycle of singlehood. Perhaps some of you guys, you've been single for quite a while. Um, if you're not dealing with anyone, I definitely see someone coming in. Um, and this, when you do have this connection, know and understand that you're ending the cycle of being single. Uh, it's finally came to its conclusion or <laughs> it's, start, it's time to embrace a new beginning. And we have two of cups. So I feel for a lot of you guys, the majority of you guys, uh, Gemini, if you're not dealing with anyone, there is definitely a connection that's coming through by the end of this month or beginning of February. Um, this person is showing up and they're showing up right when it's a very pivotal moment in your life. Either you've been broken up or you've been dealing with a situation that has you feeling stuck, has you feeling like you are not seeing any type of progress, you finally decide to move on or to start doing you, and that's when this new person comes in. For others of you, if you are or have been dealing with someone new, I feel this is progressing into something beautiful. There is a transformation here. When I see the fool in the death card, when we're talking about new love, new romance, um, it's definitely the experiencing of like an example of in the past, all of you experienced as shitty people. It's finally being able to know, um, the difference. And the reason why, you know, the difference is not just because you know exactly what it is that you want now, but it has more to do with, they come in with a different type of healing energy, a healthy, loving relationship is what they're saying. So for some of you guys, uh, embracing a new beginning with a new person that's coming in for others of you, if you are dealing with someone this will progress into something more long-term. Uh, I feel that there is a major deepening of a connection and it's bringing you guys a lot of healing. Um, I feel like this connection is going to be very healing in the aspect of really showing almost like holding up a mirror and telling you, Gemini, this is why you're so amazing. This is, <clears throat> this is why you deserve good love, healthy love. Um, this is why you deserve respect. It's kind of like them teaching you things that you've never experienced in the past. So very, very amazing energy, Gemini. All right, now let's look into the old flame, old love for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they feel about Gemini? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions towards Gemini? 
Okay, here we go. How do they feel about you? Queen of Wands. Physical attraction um, is still present. Um, there is almost like when I see the Queen of Wands as a position of how they feel about you, there was something that was like almost a habit or some type of cycle where they would try to overpower your personality, your temper, your attitude, or the way you are. It's kind of like the people that are a bit controlling. Um, so I feel like this person definitely still, you know, still has that passion or that desire to be with you. Um, why do they feel this way? The chariot, again, I, I feel manipulation is something that came through very strongly. <laughs> now hear me out, Gemini. If you've been dealing with the person, your ex-partner, right, or ex-lover, has a tendency of like ghosting and then they come back and then they reach out and it's like a kind of like a, a, a coming back around and going back and then coming in again. There's a lot of inconsistency. The reason is because this person has controlling issues. And in these two cards, I do not see any type of water. It's more fire and fire is passion. But sometimes um, when the person is showing certain attributes of controlling uh, manipulation, stuff like that, it's not necessarily a good thing because this is a person that's used to getting what they want. Uh, and the reason why they get what they want is because you allow them. So with the chariot card, it is indicating to me almost like the feeling of I just like I lost them, I'm able to get them back the way I got them the first time. So if you uh, have been dealing with an ex or an ex partner, someone that does, you know, have these qualities or these attributes of controlling uh, the moment they see that you start walking away or that you start doing you or that you start going out, uh, they start hitting you up. Don't think for a second that it's because it's out of love. Uh, what they're doing is they don't want to lose control over you um, or they want they don't want to feel like they don't have control over you anymore. So even if you're not you haven't dealt with them for a while, they may still be looking at you from a distance. And the reason for it is, again, like I said, this person, <coughs> something about their ego and their pride. Now, the next card that we have here is the Hierophant. So, again, I feel like this person sees you in a way like an odd object, something that belongs to them, even if you've been broken up, even if you haven't been dealing with them for a while. Um, and I feel that this is a habit of theirs. So you may be hearing from them. They may be reaching out if they do reach out. Um, and in the past, they've kind of fallen off the map after a couple of, you know, text messages or a couple of calls or whatnot. Um, and the reason for it is because when... What I'm seeing here is a lot of candles that are lit um, when they are bored or when they don't have more options is when they come back around or they try to reach reach out to you. Uh, the Hierophant is, again, uh, speaking to me about old patterns. Uh, this is something that this person, um, in essence, these cards are not negative, but the energy that's coming through is of a very prideful person, a person that is all about ego and pride and sees things at, as material things, sees things as uh, this belongs to me and it's an object type of thing. So again, rise above that. Um, my advice, don't give them the time of day, Gemini. <clears throat> All right, now let's move on. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love. New love for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see... How do they see cancer? How do they see cancer? How do they feel about cancer? And what is their future actions towards cancer? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have the lover's card. A lot of intensity, a lot of passion. Desire is definitely there. Ten of Cups. Um, for some of you guys, you guys are currently in your um, honeymoon phase. Um, for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are just recently dealing with this person, uh, there is a lot of contemplation about the future or looking forward to the future. Now, I also see here the judgment card. So I feel like this person, <clears throat> this person is definitely wanting to progress there. If you haven't been official yet and you're still dealing with them and there is almost a feeling like, um, is this going to become something more, especially those of you guys that started off physical, um, 
The answer is definitely yes. I feel like this person's been mulling over and they definitely get, they got to a point or they realized that they got to a point where they are emotionally invested in you at this point. The judgment is making the decision. Also, judgment has a lot to do with other people around. So I feel like they're making it official or they're asking you to make it official sometime in the end of this month or the beginning of next month. Uh, for others of you, especially those of you guys that are currently single, not dealing with anyone whatsoever, uh, there is definitely a new person that's coming in for you guys. And I feel like this person will be introduced to you through family or friends. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to old flame. Let's see what's going on there for cancer, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with their ex partner, ex lover. How do they feel about cancer? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions towards cancer, sun, moon, rising, Venus? Okay, first card here is the Page of Cups. So they're definitely still interested in you. They're looking at you, perhaps watching you through social media, probably hearing from you. If you have common friends or people in your social network or search, uh, social circle, uh, they're definitely getting tips um, or a little bit of feedback about what's going on in your life. The next card here is the Page of Wands. <coughs> So there's definitely still passion there. There's still desire. For those of you guys that are looking for some type of reconciliation, I feel like that will definitely come through in the end of this month. Um, Page of Wands is like not being able to contain it no more and actually taking uh, action towards it. Nine of Cups is emotional fulfillment. So for a lot of you guys, those of you guys that are hoping, wanting some type of reconciliation, I see the, concili <laughs> the reconciliation happening there. Um, for others of you that are not looking for uh, reconciliation, um, I definitely feel like this person will be hitting you up or will be messaging you because perhaps for some of you guys, they've seen that you've moved on or that you're dealing with someone else. Um, and this person actually has you inspired or motivated. Um, for some of you guys, you could have gotten recently into a relationship and they found out about it. And that's the reason why they're taking action towards trying to communicate with you. So I definitely do see movement here and communication happening. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go on to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo. New love. What's going on? <coughs> what's going on with Leo? New love. Give me one second. Let me put more incense here. <clears throat> Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love. New love for Leo. How do they see Leo? How do they feel about Leo? And what is their future actions towards Leo? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love. Okay. First card here is the sun. Obviously, Leo. <laughs> they see you as the sun. They see you radiant. Um, they see you as the one person that stands out and lightens up a whole room. Uh, there is definitely desire or want. Uh, to continue exploring this connection or this relationship. Four of Cups does indicate to me feeling you a little bit standoffish, feeling you a little bit uninterested or perhaps bored. If you recently started dealing with someone, Leo, and you feel like they're a bit like reserved or a bit boring, um, I'm not sure if you can see here the cups, right? But in this cup, there is the filling of that cup and there's flowers bursting out of it. It's energy moving. So, and, and this one's a little bit more, uh, more clear, more empty. Um, <clears throat> this is the past. So there is something uh, within you, Leo, uh, in the past that you have a habit of doing when we're talking about relationships. And what they're telling you is it's time to move on from those old patterns or those old behaviors and move towards what's coming towards you, meaning the present, meaning the sun, the blessing. Um, the connection that's coming through. So again, if you feel like this person may be a little bit stale, a little bit boring, a little bit of not necessarily what you're used to or what you're into, what they're telling you is give this opportunity. Give this opportunity because as you can see these two cards, if you connect them, there is an energy circle here. So there is something that will bring you guys or draw you guys together or towards each other to be able to experience the sun. So again, uh, if you are dealing with someone that is not necessarily your forte or someone that you usually go for, what they're telling you is that there's more than meets the eye. 
all right? Now, the next card here is Four of Wands. Yeah. <laughs> if you're able to embrace the new beginnings, if you're able to embrace the new connections, stability will come through for you. And this is stability of the sun and the Four of Wands. Could be particularly the person you will meet um, that you will commit to or the person that you will marry or the person that you will move in with. Um, and it will be a scenario of there is a bit of disinterest on your part uh, because you're not seeing the whole picture or because you're not fully giving uh, the opportunity for those seeds to ferment, okay? <laughs> now, for those of you guys that are completely single and not dealing with anyone, uh, you will definitely uh, be meeting someone that comes through and may come through, like I said, someone that feels like they're not necessarily your usual type but if you give it enough, you know, enough time to actually get to know the person, you will not only be blown away, but this could be particularly that pivotal moment in your life where it completely transforms your life moving forward. OK, in a positive way. I hope you guys don't mind my crappy ass nails. <laughs> I have I've been working so hard, you guys. <clears throat> I have not had time to go see my nail tech. And she messaged me every, I go every, um, I would say every like two and a half um, to three weeks. And when I don't, she hits me up like, it's time, what's going on? But I've been so busy. I just haven't been able to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now let's look into Leo, old flame, old partner, ex-lover. For those of you guys that are interested, let's see what's going on there. Old flame. How do they feel about Leo? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions for its real sun, moon, rising Venus? Let's see what's going on, old flame. How do they feel about Leo? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions for its Leo? One more shuffle. Okay, here we go. First card we have is the devil card. <laughs> this, uh, you may be dealing, or the ex-partner could be a Capricorn or a Saturn type of planet, which would, uh, sorry, type of sign, which would be Capricorn or Aquarius. Um, I feel like they feel, they still feel like they have some type of control over you, Leo. Not sure if you can see there the attachment, right? At the very bottom, you see that person covering their head. That's an indication to me, like feeling like they can still manipulate you, like they can still control you or like they have some say in your life. The next card is the Empress card here. So for some of you guys, you may have children or children may be involved. Um, if this is baby daddy, baby mama type of thing, they may be popping up again because they're wanting to. I, I see them like wanting to know what's going on in your life, but I feel that it's in a very negative way, Leo, because there's type of like controlling issues. So. If you do have children, um, they know obviously that if they steer up something with your child, um, they know that that's going to affect you or that it's going to give that you're going to give some type of reaction. So I feel like for some of you guys, it could be the desire to want <coughs> the desire to want to upset you only because they want to see some type of reaction out of you. If that is what you're experiencing or have been dealing with. Do not react to it, Leo. This is a way of them uh, trying to figure out basically if there's still some type of emotion there. Um, with the Nine of Pentacles, I feel like this person is just bored. Like they're bored. Um, they don't have nothing interesting going on in their love life. And that could be the reason why they're creating these issues. For some of you guys, it could be issues money-wise. We have the Nine of Pentacles here. Um, so if uh, this ex-partner of yours... <coughs> If there's children involved or if you're going through a divorce, some type of separation, um, they may be creating uh, scenarios or situations that become a bit frustrating for you. And the reason why is because money is involved or they don't want to give money or they don't want to take some type of responsibility here. Regardless of the situation, I feel like the outcome is going to be to the best of your interest. You do have the Empress here and the Knight of Pentacles. Um, now, for others of you, what they are showing me here is that you're going <coughs> you're going into this new cycle where you're no longer being able to be manipulated by your partner. And it almost seems like distorted in a way to say, but the more they feel like you're empowered, the more they see that you're moving on. Nine of Pentacles fully embracing your singlehood 
or learning to have fun with it, that's what's triggering them. That's what they cannot stand. So they will be popping up back and forth. And the reason why is because they don't want you to uh, move on or to be basically living your best life because they're stuck still in the same situation. Okay. <clears throat> Sucks to be them. All right. Now let's move on. Let's see. We are going to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo here. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus new love how do they see virgo how do they feel about virgo and what is their future actions towards virgo virgo sun moon rising venus you guys definitely comment below what your sign is um whatever sign gets the most comments uh we will start off the next reading with your sign because I know a lot of my Pisces are always like, we're always at the end. So I try to switch it up sometimes for you guys. But um, that's what we're going to be doing now. So whatever your sign is, comment below. The sign that gets the most comments is the one we're starting off with next reading. Okay. All right. Let's see. Virgo. What's going on with Virgo? Okay. How do they see Virgo? How do they feel about Virgo and their future actions? Here we go. <clears throat> first card we have the two of swords there's something that they're not wanting to see oh i see <laughs> three of wands here <clears throat> and the hierophant okay <clears throat> so what i'm sensing for you guys is if recently there hasn't been any communication or there was some type of hiccup in this connection and they're not really communicating or you guys had some type of disagreement. Three of Wands is waiting to hear from you, waiting for you to be the one to reach out. Um, the Hierophant does indicate, you know, still holding on to that hope that maybe something can come from it. Maybe something can progress or maybe this relationship or connection still has a future. Um, but it is a person that is more into... I put in the work and I'm going to sit here and wait for them to be the ones to reach out. So I'm not sure what happened there um, between you guys, Virgo. Um, if there was, like I said, an argument or some type of misunderstanding. If you, <clears throat> in your heart, you know that perhaps you're being stubborn and you're not wanting to see something that uh, sometimes this happens where you're getting to know someone and they bring up a conversation or they say something that triggers you. And sometimes you overreact without really realizing why you're overreacting. Um, it could be because there is unhealed parts of you um, that is, you know, being triggered. Um, <clears throat> so are you really upset at them? Or is it that there are unhealed parts to yourself that made you feel a certain type of way to react in a way of like pushing them out. Um, because if that's the case, my advice with the Hierophant here, my advice is be the one to reach out, be the bigger person. Um, sometimes that happens and we cannot sit there and wait for the other person to uh, pretty much give in when we are the one um, that has certain issues that you need to work out within yourself, okay? <clears throat> All right, now let's look into the old flame for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Old flame, how they feel about Virgo. Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions towards them? However, Virgo, if you weren't the one that was at, at wrong in this connection or in this relationship uh, for the new ones, um, <coughs> and... You have a tendency since this connection started to be the one to reach out. Then they're telling you to stand your ground. Um, however, we carry the relationship in the beginning of relationships or connections is kind of the tone you're setting uh, for the future. So you don't want a person that's going to be, you know, stuck there in their pride um, because you're always going to be the one to chase. And that's not OK. All right. All right. <clears throat> Old flame for Virgo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. How do they feel about Virgo? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions towards Virgo? Virgo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have the two of cups. Beautiful energy. Um, <coughs> obviously, they haven't moved on, Virgo. They're not over you. 
they feel like you've abandoned them. They feel like you left them out in the cold. Um, there's almost this feeling of, there's almost this feeling of, I don't know if you guys had some type of ultimatum in this connection before it ended. <laughs> What's standing out to me here is the key. So it's almost like the person is there, right? And the door is closed, but the key's there. But they're so consumed that they can lift, you know, lift their head and lift that the key's there. Um, so that's indicating to me, for some of you guys, in this ending or this relationship could have came to an end <coughs> because of pride. Um, for some of you guys, it could have been that you were expecting some type of higher level of commitment and they were just being stubborn with it and not wanting to give in or not wanting to give it their all. Um, and I feel like they're really in their, uh, in their head about this. They're understanding that. And I see regret. Regret is what's coming through very strongly. I do feel like for some of you guys, uh, you will definitely be he uh, hearing from your ex partner. Um, if it's a reconciliation you're looking for, then it's definitely coming through. Um, but I still feel like if they will be reaching out, but I still feel like they're still reserved about how far they want to take this relationship. So my advice to you guys is if you're looking for a reconciliation and they reach out, you need to really plant your cards on the table and be completely honest. If what you want is commitment, let them know, hey, this is what I'm looking for. If you're not ready, if you're hesitant or you're confused, like enough with the bullshit. <coughs> Don't waste my time uh, if you cannot give that to me, um, because I feel like there's still yes, there's remorse, there's regrets. There's a wanting to revisit the connection, wanting to reconcile. Um, but with the five of pentacles right at the center, it also indicates them being reserved about uh, taking that step, moving forward. Um, so again, I do see communication happening, but you need to make it very clear um, of what you're expecting. And for those of you guys that are just, you know, don't be surprised if your ex does reach out to you. All right. <clears throat> now let's go to who's next? Libra. All right, let's look into Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, new love. How do they see Libra? How do they feel about Libra? And what is their future actions towards Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, new love, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. <coughs> All right, first card here is the world card. Uh, beginning a new cycle, <coughs> elevation, uh, some type of elevated energy here. Um, travel could be involved right now. Five of pent. Yeah. I feel like for some of you guys, um, especially those of you guys that are dealing with a person from a distance, like they don't live local or they're like halfway around the country. Um, there is a lot of obviously missing each other, wanting to take, take things to the next level, but there is distance that's involved. Um, for others of you, if there was a recent connection and there's no communication right now, it could be because, um, uh, like I said, distance has something to do with distance here. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be that the person feels like you have uh, certain aspects about yourself, Libra, that make you a bit clingy or make you a bit uh, like very particular and they're not sure they can fulfill that. Um, what's coming through for me is very clingy. Um, so if you've noticed a shift in this person or they're not as accessible to you, the reason is because they feel like, you know, they really thought that this could progress into something. Um, <clears throat> but there are certain attributes to you or to your personality where they feel like they, in the long run, um, it's going to affect the relationship because they feel like maybe they cannot provide all the attention or all the love or the, you know, thoughtfulness, whatever the situation is, <coughs> um, there's something within themselves. I, I see this person because of the world card. I see this person as mature. Uh, they're emotionally mature enough to realize that maybe you, what you're asking for is too much for them right now, that they cannot give that to you. So there is a feeling of wanting to reach out or there is a feeling of still kind of mulling over, should we continue? Should we just call it quits? 
Um, but I feel that it's coming from a good place. It's not coming from a negative way. Uh, it's not a situation where it's like, oh, I'm moving on to the next person. No, I feel like it has more to do with what, and see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, six of pentacles. So there, <laughs> there is a feeling of, I am mature enough, I am wise enough that if Libra's coming up, coming on a little too strong or a little bit too clingy in the past, I've had a person that was very clingy and it didn't work out because they were asking for too much, either too much attention, too much effort, whatever it is. Uh, six of pentacles is the giving and receiving the giving and taking five of pentacles is not giving enough or not receiving enough with the world card. I'm wise enough or I'm mature enough, or I've experienced enough to know that if there is something missing in this relationship, we need to address it now because it may affect us down the line. So I feel like this person may, like I said, I feel like this, this thing is involved right now and it's because of that. All right, now let's look into the old flame, old flame for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Uh, <clears throat> Libra for the new love, I don't feel like I don't feel like it's the end of that relationship or that connection. I just feel like this person needs a little bit of space or a little bit of time to figure out exactly what it is that they want to do. Um, <clears throat> that's what's coming through very strongly for you guys. Okay, let's look at Libra, old flame, ex-partner. How do they feel about Libra? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future actions towards Libra, sun, moon, rising, and Venus? Libra, here we go. We have the Magician card, <clears throat> the Wheel of the Year, and the Ace of Wands. Wow. As an X, <laughs> extremely positive cards. Um, for some of you guys, I feel like there is, def there is definitely going to be communication that happens here. I'm going to be honest. I feel like you're going to be feeling, if you've been dreaming about your ex-partner, or you've been bumping into them, or you've seen them multiple times on different occasions with different people, um, I feel like the universe is conspiring right now. And I feel like your story hasn't came to an end yet. There are certain things that still need to progress or still need to happen in this connection. Um, for some of you guys, it is major reconciliation, especially those of you guys that have been doing like uh, <coughs> manifestations or spell work, you're definitely seeing some type of momentum to start to pick up. Um, but I greatly feel uh, from a broader perspective, I feel like the universe is not done with you too. There are certain things that still need to be experienced in this connection or in this relationship um, to be able to fully end that cycle. And I feel like it's a new beginning. Um, so for a lot of you guys, reconciliations will be happening. Uh, for others of you, it's the realization that maybe at some point your ex-partner wasn't ready, um, but they've elevated themselves, they've elevated their vibration, they are more wiser, or they will be coming through as I've learned my lesson and I've realized that you are the best thing that ever happened to me and they're taking action towards making that happen. I What I'm hearing is like, I'm not ready to let you go yet. Um, so <clears throat> there you go. Interesting, interesting reading for old love. <laughs> it's like a restarting of something. Um, not sure if it's because of what they've experienced after you or that they see you moving on. Not sure what's going on there, but there is definitely like a clarity of mind to say, you know what? I did mess up. You know what? I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to give up on us. And they're going to definitely show you through actions that they mean what they say which is amazing. I never see that. Rarely do I see that in readings. All right. Now let's move on to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, New Love. How do they see Scorpio? How do they feel about Scorpio? And what is the future actions towards Scorpio? <clears throat> Give me one second, you guys. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see Scorpio? How do they feel about Scorpio and future actions? New Love. For Scorpio. <clears throat> First card here is the tower. Whoa. We're starting off. Holy moly guacamole. The lover's card and the seven of wands. Okay. 
off the bat, I can tell you, um, Scorpio, if recently you met someone or you connected with someone um, and it was very intense, it was hot and heavy. It was like you met this person and you kind of felt very comfortable with each other, like you guys knew each other from a long time or something. This was a when I see the tower and the lover's card, it always represents to me like a whirlwind romance, something that happens it's like the strike of lightning, right? It happens very, very quick. And it's so intense that even if that connection or that relationship lasts like two months, it is something that you will always remember for the rest of your life. That's what the lovers and the tower represent. Uh, that's the energy that comes through. Um, <clears throat> so again, if you've recently connected with someone and it's been very intense, very heavy, and all of a sudden you start to experience a bit of hiccups in the relationship, know and understand that th this is needed. <clears throat> For some of you guys, this is a, I'm going to be honest, I rarely see this, um, but I feel like for some of you guys, this could potentially be some type of twin flame type of connection where we kind of have to set boundaries um, because it's so intense and it's so like, it's so in the moment um, that it kind of wraps up your whole world. Like it, be, the relationship becomes your whole world. And the seven of wands is being wise enough, right? It, it's being uh, understanding enough or mature enough to understand that you also have to nurture other aspects of your life. So again, this is not necessarily a negative thing. I feel like it's a very positive thing if you know how to navigate those waters. I feel like for some of you guys, it could be potentially, like I said, a twin flame type of connection that comes through where hiccups start to be experiencing uh, or you guys start to experience some type of setbacks. But the reason for this is because you need to work on your boundaries, Scorpio. There is something about boundaries here. Um, for others of you, if you have not met anyone or you're not dealing with anyone, just be ready because I do see a major powerful connection that comes through. I'm telling you right now, be very cautious to maintain and continue nurturing other aspects of your life, because I feel like if you don't create that, you know, those boundaries, if you don't understand that a relationship is not your whole life, that you need to nurture other aspects of your life, you may not have as many obstacles in this connection, because that means that you're rising to that vibration. And it does happen sometimes where I'll have clients that when I look into their relationship, it is a twin flame connection. And all these people have these, uh, <coughs> you know, stories or cognitations about what twin flame connections are. And there's toxicity behind that because they encourage you chasing and stuff like that. I don't do that shit. Um, but rare is the occasion that I actually do see clients have a twin flame connection. And sometimes when that happens, one or the other person is just not ready for that type of connection um, because we have to go through certain lessons. So again, if if you're not dealing with anyone, what they're telling you is just be ready and make sure to understand no matter how heavy and steamy and amazing this connection happens or is, it is important to maintain every other aspect of your life as well and nurture the, that those aspects because then you don't lose yourself in that connection and if your twin flame or the person that's coming through um, has certain things that they need to work on, and one of them is, for example, the wanting to be free, if they don't feel caged by you, then it will manifest into something much more long term. Why? Because you're not doing what they've experienced in the past connections, right? And because it's so hot and strong, the connection, it's like you allow them to heal while you're healing yourself and the need to be in control of the situation. You see what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. All right. Now let's go to old flame or exes <clears throat> for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, old flame. How do they feel about Scorpio? Why do they feel that way? Future actions for Scorpio. Old Flame, how do they feel about Scorpio? Why do they feel that way? And what is the future actions towards Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? All right, here we go. First card here is the World card, the Moon card, 
and the queen of cups okay so there is definitely an ending to this cycle for a lot of you guys um i feel like there is not there's not a lot of progression that happens in this connection for those of you guys that are dealing with exes um <clears throat> i feel like it's came to its conclusion with the moon card um especially if you feel like you guys are still spiritually connected i would highly encourage you guys to do a cutting of cords or a cleansing uh, because the moon card and the queen of cups does speak to me about a connection on an energetical level um, but with the world card here it's time to completely release yourself from your ex or release their energy um, no matter how horrible or how amazing the relationship ended um, <clears throat> send them off with love and it could be as simplistic as lighting a white candle telling your spirit guides I ask you to step forward and guide me in the releasing of this energy and speak to them as they were there um, in your mind in your mind's eye see them and tell them I release you now with love I release you now in the purest form of love thank you for the experiences that were experienced in this relationship and I close my energetic field um, I release the cords that are still linked to you and I and we are both free to do and continue on our life and the reason why I'm saying that is again <coughs> the moon and queen of cups indicates that they're still in your energy and that's not necessarily a good thing because you will notice that for some of you guys maybe those of you guys that have been single for a while maybe you feel like people are not really drawn to you and there is such a thing as um, uh, being repulsed by other ener by other people energetically and the reason is because they feel or sense the energy that is still linked to you okay all right my lovelies now let's go to <clears throat> Sagittarius let's see what's going on with Sagittarius new love Sagittarius new love Sun Moon rising Venus new love for Sagittarius how do they see Sagittarius how do they feel about Sagittarius and what is the future actions towards Sagittarius Sun Moon rising Venus Sagittarius Sun Moon rising Venus all right here we go the first card here is the eight of wands a lot of passion a lot of exciting experiences a lot of adventures <coughs> next card is the strength card uh very intense passionate connection here okay and three of cups all right so what they're showing me here is for a lot of you guys um there is definitely a lot of physical a lot of physical attraction here in this connection um there is definitely a feeling of i i feel like for a lot of you guys this person is really really has your attention sagittarius and the reason is because this person is extremely adventurous this is a person that loves to go uh to do things that maybe you're not accustomed to as an example if all you've dated is you know homebodies this person is like oh let's go here let's go hiking let's go to the mountains let's go camping let's it they're bringing a lot of a lot of road tripping a lot of expansion this is a person that is very worldly meaning that they've traveled a lot <coughs> and you admire that and you're drawn to that you're a sagittarius after all so again i feel like this person is really bringing in um a lot of new experiences that you're going to be going through that is really going to help um and elevate uh your experience up until now especially with the three of cups it's really celebratory type of energy um and more than anything i feel like this connection i'm gonna be honest i don't feel like this connection is something that would be more like on the long term um but it is kind of like when the person shows up or comes into your life, you experience a lot, you live a lot, and it is nothing but good things. It is absolutely nothing but beautiful things. Not to say that it cannot progress into something long term. Um, it's almost like destiny or the universe is not really telling you right now about that, but they are telling you live in the moment. Be present and fully experience, fully take in these experiences because it's going to help uh, for the growth of your soul. Um, and I feel like for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that as an example, if the people you've dealt with have been nothing but toxic or have been nothing but like lessons, I feel like this is a person that comes into your life.
what I'm saying. It's almost like, like I said, it's not to say that this will not turn into something long term because they're not showing me that. So that is still in the unforeseen future. But what they are saying is that this person is bringing in all the experiences that you've missed out, perhaps in previous relationships. They're, it's almost like getting jumpstarted by a car, right? Pouring all that electricity because they're bringing all these experiences to your life. And though this May person has always been that way, to you it's a very different type of energy because you've never experienced that. Um, that if, you know, at some point, if it's you the one that doesn't want to progress or, or make it something long term, you can ultimately turn into a lesson for them. But for you, it was a blessing because you needed to experience that at that point in time. I hope that makes sense. All right. <clears throat> now let's look into the old flame or ex-partner or ex-lover for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they feel about Sagittarius? Why do they feel that way? And what is the future actions? Future actions for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. First card here is the Devil. <clears throat> Nine of Pentacles. And the Ace of Swords. So, this person is, <coughs> excuse me. Wanting to come back into your life, you're definitely going to hear from them. That's if you haven't heard from them already, because I do have the Ace of uh, Swords here, which is communication. I feel like for some of you guys, you are already dealing with that type of energy where they're texting or trying to communicate with you. But I feel strongly that they're trying to pull you back into that relationship because they cannot stand the fact that you're single and that you're working on nurturing yourself or that you're focused on your coins. So there is some type of toxic connection here going on where this person is trying to manipulate themselves into your life to pull you or draw you back into um, that situation or that type of environment that you were in that connection because they see you progressing or making plans for the future. Ace of Swords here is, like I said, communication. is definitely communication coming through. My advice is if you did experience... Um, this type of connection. A lot of times when people ask, when you're dealing with a toxic relationship, people ask, you know, the person that was being treated this way, why would you go back? Or why did you continue putting up with so much, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes being mistreated, being belittled, being, you know, just mistreated gets you in a state of mind where you connect that with love. Even if it sounds crazy, like you connect that with love because that's the only type of love that you have gone on dealing with. So that's what your brain connects to love. And the thought of that person not being in your life or the thought of that person not, especially if it was so toxic that they're the ones that would tell you what to do, <clears throat> a very possessive type of energy. When you don't have that, you kind of feel lost because it's so foreign to you. Um, so that's the reason why a lot of the times, you know, nine out of 10 times, the person goes back to the person that's toxic um, <clears throat> because they feel like they can't figure life out on their own. But the moment you start to focus on yourself, the moment you start to nurture yourself, the moment you start to be around people that genuinely love you and that take care of you and treat you well, then you're quickly able to compare that to what how you were treated or what you experienced in that connection. And then you realize and come to the realization that aha moment, like, wow, I really put up with this shit. <clears throat> Once you get in that state of mind, there is no going back. Like this person could go above and beyond to try to manipulate the, their way back into your life. But when you've <coughs> surrounded yourself uh, with people that care and love you and heal you almost help you heal that that process there's no turning back because once your brain connects you know like i said you have that moment of clarity that realization nothing in the world could convince you of going back to that and i feel like that's what's happening and that's why they're trying the best they can to try to lure you or pull you back into this connection be smart about it sagittarius all right now let's go to Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. 
Let's look into their new love for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, new love. How do they see Capricorn? How do they feel about Capricorn? And what is the future actions towards Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? All right, here we go. First card here is the Empress card. Beautiful energy. Um, <coughs> the Empress is being able to see a person in their true light. Um, almost like they see you as motherly um, or a person that everything you have, um, everything you have, you've earned. It's almost like this person is wise. This person is mature. Uh, this person has, you know, their shit together. Um, if, you know, you have your own business, you run your own business, or you've been at the company or the place of your work for a very long time, they see you as a person that is very reliable. Um, but there is some type of admiration here because Empress is always beauty. So they definitely see you as a beautiful person. They see you as a person that is, uh, basically creating their own universe, right? <clears throat> There's almost a feeling of like they're in their own vibe. They're in their own magical realm and they are so curious and interested in, you know, really experiencing or living or being able to touch that connection or that life that you live uh, in a beautiful way. Now, the next card here is the full card. So there is definitely a desire to take things. Uh, let's, let's see how far this can go. Let's see. I see this person as really motivated to win you over. And I was going to say, uh, the Empress is also giving me the vibe of like kind of feeling like maybe you're out of their league um, or like maybe they've never dated someone like you, but they are definitely up to the challenge, Capricorn. <laughs> and the next card here is the Page of Cups. So yeah, I feel like this connection will be progressing. It will um, continue exploring each other, basically. Uh, for those of you guys that are recently just dealing with this person, I feel like, I feel like you may feel at some point, Capricorn, that you are a little bit more mature or like you're a little bit more serious in regards to how you approach the dating. Um, whereas they're more like childlike type of energy, but that's beautiful energy. Why? Because we all know Capricorns can have a tendency of being a little bit stuck in the mud, um, <clears throat> not as spontaneous. Um, and when you are around a person that is very childlike and not childlike in a annoying way, but childlike in the sense of kind of teaching you like the smaller things, um, it, it, it kind of grounds you. It grounds you and it makes you think, uh, see life uh, through different eyes and you become much more inspired Capricorn. Um, especially with the page of cups here, I feel like this person is a very loving, nurturing type of energy, but definitely child like it's giving me Aries vibes, you guys. Um, and I can totally relate, <laughs> um, because I'm a Capricorn. And, um, when I first got myself into a, a very long-term relationship, it was with an Aries and, he was extremely playful. He was like the type that would just do crazy things as a Capricorn. You know, um, I wasn't okay with like, as an example, uh, walking down the mall and your partner smacking your ass. It's like, we kind of cringe at that, right? <laughs> but he brought out that side to me where I was able to like, even love his craziness because it kept me um, very, like I said, very inspired like um all about chasing your dreams and like to them it's like there's no obstacles like you gotta go for what you want type of cheerleader not in a negative way if it's a guy i mean i'm saying cheerleader they cheer you on um and i think that that sometimes capricorns have a tendency of forgetting that uh you guys i don't know i'm sure you guys can relate right because i have a lot of capricorn in my chart um not just my sun sign and a lot of the times I have trouble even like disconnecting when you're winding down. It takes me a while to wind down um, and it's just in our nature. So having a person that comes in that has a very different energy than you, um, you learn from them and they learn from you. Um, so that's that's kind of the energy that I'm sensing here and I'm loving this energy for you Capricorns. <laughs> 
All right, now let's look into your old flame, old love, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they feel about Capricorn? Why do they feel that way? And what is their future, their future actions towards Capricorn? Old flame, ex-partner. How do they feel about Capricorn? Why do they feel that way? And what is the future actions towards Capricorn? All right, we have the Nine of Pentacles, <laughs> Ace of Cups, and the Five of Cups. So there is definitely regret here. There is a feeling of a missed opportunity. Um, for those of you guys that are looking for reconciliation, I feel like they will progressively get to the point of reaching out, but I don't see that happening this month. I feel like it's more drawn out. Um, so it could be sometime in the middle of February when they actually reach out. Um, I see regret here and I feel like they're seeing you as like the best thing that they experienced or like they really effed up. I really effed up, you know, Capricorn was there for me. They had my back. They were there when I needed them the most and I didn't know how to appreciate that or I didn't know how to take care of that. Um, and they're realizing that they still have feelings for you. For some of you guys, um, this could have been a situation where um, they weren't really trying to maintain the relationship before it broke off. <coughs> and they're realizing now that, hey, I do have feelings for Capricorn. Um, I do care for them. I do love them. So there's regret. There's They're definitely missing you. Like I said, I feel that there is communication that will happen eventually, but I don't feel like it's happening very quick. Um, and the reason is because they're kind of like in that energy of regret. Of, uh, I messed up. I, there's no turning back um, because Capricorn uh, is definitely not going to give me the time a day type of energy. But I feel like as you get closer with the Five of Cups, um, <clears throat> action will be taken um, I don't see it happening right now, but like I said, I do see it sometime in the middle of February. All right, now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Like I said, you guys, comment below what your sign is. Uh, those of you guys that get, uh, or if a sign gets the most comments, then that's going, that's how we're going to start off the next reading with that sign. So don't forget to comment below your sign. All right, let's go. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they see you, Aquarius? How do they feel about Aquarius? And what is the future actions towards Aquarius? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, here we go. Aquarius. We're starting off here with the Knight of Pentacles, the Empress. And the star card. Beautiful energy. <clears throat> All right. So Aquarius, I feel like for some of you guys, this connection has been a bit challenging. I feel like it hasn't been easy for you guys, especially those of you guys that recently started dealing with this person. It may feel like they're not like as accessible and I see you frustrated, but I feel like if you hold on a little bit more Aquarius, you're definitely going to see them step up. Because there's some type of elevation that's happening here. I feel like in the past, maybe they've experienced a lot of setbacks when we're talking about relationships where they're extremely guarded. Um, <clears throat> but there is a reason behind it. Um, and in this extremely being guarded, uh, once they start to connect with you on a deeper level, I feel like they're coming to the realization that you are or that you have the potential to be everything they've ever looked for when it comes to relationships. Empress and the star card is like being starstruck. It's like uh, there is a moment in time that when dealing with you, uh, they come like something just triggers in their mind. Like, yes, this is the person I've been searching for. Like when we're talking about relationships, there is a like I said, being starstruck type of energy. Um, but I feel like it's not going to be easy. Now, for those of you guys that are single and currently not dealing with anyone, I feel like the person that's coming into your life is going to be a person that you're going to feel like you literally sent a letter to God and he's finally responded to you, Aquarius. 
um, especially those of you guys that have been on a very long journey of singlehood, um, almost like you've given up on love or you feel like you just cannot connect with anyone on an emotional level, on a deeper level. Um, I feel like this person that's coming through is definitely a person that is going to be above your expectations. This is a person that is mature. This is a person that knows what they want. And this is a person that is going to see you as the star. They're going to see you as, <clears throat> like I said, the person that they always hope to find or that they would hope to be in a relationship with. So beautiful, beautiful energy here, Aquarius. I feel like it's time for you guys. I have a lot of Aquarian friends. Um, though you guys be dating, <laughs> there is always a feeling of lack of connection. Um, so I feel like you guys definitely deserve this. Okay, now let's go to your old flame. Aquarius, how do they feel about you? Why do they feel that way? And what is the future actions towards Aquarius? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Old Flame, Ex-Partner. Here we go. The first card here is the Devil. We've been seeing this a lot. This card <coughs> could be Saturn's energy, you guys. Uh, Saturn just recently moved. Um, so there is definitely some type of transition that's happening there. But with the devil, it is about realizing or coming to the realization of our toxic traits, our toxic behaviors. Uh, the ex is realizing that they're toxic as fuck. Um, next card here is the king of wands. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely the world card. Yeah. So what they're telling you here, Aquarius, time to turn the page. Whether it's you or whether it's your past partner that is still holding on or still wanting to hold on to this connection, it is time to turn the page. It is time to let go and release yourself energetically from that person. Um, the devil card here with the king of wands, it is intense. It is uh, <laughs> just as passionate, um, but also uh, extremely like authoritative type of energy, the, the wanting to be in control, the oh, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the macho. Uh, if it's a female, oh, you know, um, because I'm the female, you have to do what I say. If you really care for me, it's emotional manipulation. And what they're telling you with the world card, it's time to end that cycle. It's time to release yourself. It's time to flip the script. It's time to move on and stop allowing the person to pop into your life to try to draw you back in. Uh, there is an ending cycle here with the world card. You're taking things to a different level. Your consciousness is becoming aware of those toxic traits and the realization of no longer allowing people to manip manipulate themselves or manipula manipulate you into doing uh, what they expect you to do. So it's almost like a switching up. Something is happening here where there is a switch up uh, in regards to how you react to this ex or this person from the past. Um, but I definitely see you guys being able to accept, fully accept, and walking away towards a better, towards a better life, towards a better, uh, more healthy way of loving yourself and allowing other people to love you. Um, <clears throat> I also see for some of you guys, it's almost like a situation that what I'm hearing is if you've been or dealt with your ex-partner at some point and they made you feel belittled or they made you feel like you could never do better than them or they made you, or they even told you like you're not going to find no one better than me. Um, it's almost like you're seeing them being able to like like eat eat your fucking words. You know what I mean? That type of energy. It's almost like you're really like on the ground graveling. Um and you never thought you would get to that point, but you're actually seeing them beg. And that's something that's coming through very strongly. It's almost like they felt all high and mighty or something. Um, or they, you know, like I said, they told you, you can not, you're never going to do better than me. And here they are reaching out, trying to text you, trying to communicate with you, trying to win you back. Um, and, and I'm hearing you like, I never thought the day would come. Well, it's here. Um, and what Spirit is telling you, it's, it's time to flip that page, end that chapter, start a new one. All right, my lovelies. And finally, but not 
least. My lovely Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's look into their new love. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, new love. How do they see you? How do they feel about you? And what is their future actions towards you, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, new love? Let's see what's going on there. All right, here we go. First card. What in the blue hell? The devil again. <clears throat> King of Wands. And the Six of Cups. Well, <coughs> that was interesting. All right. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a... You may be dealing with a Capricorn or you may be dealing with an Aquarius. I feel like for some of you guys, though, um, because we have the Six of Cups here and the King of Wands, I feel like you guys haven't let go of a past relationship or a previous partner. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with someone new in your life. Could be a fire energy, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo type of energy. Um... I feel them much more mature than what you're used to or accustomed to, Pisces. However, I feel like you keep roaming or reminiscing about the past or a past relationship. Now, if you are currently in a relationship and you recently connected with someone from your past, I feel like you're being tempted to give that a try. Um, but with the devil card here, what they're telling you is just remember that what starts wrong ends wrong. Um, <clears throat> we do no judgment in this channel. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that if you're going into a new connection with the energy or the dragging energy of a previous partner, someone you have not healed from, right? Someone that you are still being physical with and <clears throat> you go and jump or give yourself to someone else while carrying that energy, that energy is still going to be manifested in that connection. Meaning the baggage from the past is going to be drawn out to this new connection, which will get to a eventuality of it affecting the connection. So what they're telling you is it's time to end cycles, Pisces, um, where, you go in, you go into certain things with good intentions. Um, <clears throat> it's almost like there's an innocence to this connection. I'm not sure if the innocence, the innocence is on your part or the innocence is on the person uh, that you're currently dealing with. But what they're telling you here is there's a difference between going into something with pure intention and going into something knowing what the circumstance is and just making it more difficult and more complex, more messy, basically. So what they're telling you here is, yes, this new connection does have the possibilities of moving forward into something more, you know, more stable. However, you need to deal with the past or you need to deal or end the past before you begin a new chapter in your life. Why? Because you don't want, you don't want it to get messy. You don't want loose ends to affect you or to come up when things are going great in this new connection that will later bite you in the ass and then you come out looking like you were wrong for that but like I said you went into it with good intentions okay I hope that makes sense <clears throat> now hear me Pisces if you're single and you haven't been dealing with anyone um but there is some type of connection there to a person from your past. There is a new person that's coming in and I see you tossing and turning, not knowing almost like exactly what to do because you got yourself into a little mess. Um, when I hear those type of warnings, it usually indicates like things happen so fast. You didn't intend to hurt anyone type of thing. Um, but it's like you're in too deep now. So just be cautious. If there's something that you need to end, end it now. Um, with When this new person comes along um, and you know exactly who the cards are telling you at that point in time, know that if you have any loose ends, take care of them. All right. Now let's look into the old flame for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How do they feel about you, Pisces? How do they feel about you? Why do they feel that way? And what is the future actions towards Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? 
Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Old Flame, how do they feel about you? Why do they feel that way? And future actions. Here we go, Pisces. First card here is the Knight of Swords. They're definitely looking at you, definitely stalking you. The Empress, you may be connected to them. <coughs> Children may be involved. There is almost like they're wanting to see what's going on in your life. There is a feeling of losing control here. There is a feeling of... I don't want to give it enough time because I don't want to lose them. I feel like they're desperate is what I'm hearing for you guys. King of Pentacles here. Okay. So this is a person that is obviously stubborn. It is a person that doesn't see their faults in themselves, but are very quick to judge or see faults in other people. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you've moved on Pisces, it's like they're very, they're being very judgmental about the person you're choosing to be with or the person you're dealing with, but yet they're not looking in the mirror, realizing where they effed up. And that's the reason why this relationship didn't work. Now, I do see them wanting to reach out. However, I don't see communication actually happening. I just see them looking at you from a distance. So this could be them looking at you through social media this could be them creating fake profiles. Uh, this could be them even um, <laughs> if a mother is involved, meaning like their mother or your mother that talks to them or still has communication. It could be like them trying to create or st steer up some type of drama that makes you look like the bad person. Um, but I feel that the reason why they're doing that is, again, like I said, they feel like they've completely lost you or they've completely lost control of the situation. Um, I don't see communication happening for those of you guys that are looking for some type of reconciliation. I just see them watching you, to be honest, watching you from a distance, uh, watching your every move. Um, yeah, it's giving me kind of creepy vibes. <laughs> Because the King of Pentacles is looking towards the Empress, uh, some type of obsession going on there. Um, and again, I feel like the reason, the obsession or the impulse of being watching you has a lot to do with either rumors that they've heard about you or uh, what they've seen so far, uh, uh, what's going on with your life, especially those of you guys that are being more proactive or more like um, doing a little bit more of more of things in your life and you've been posting it, they definitely know about it or they've heard about it. Um, but I don't see them reaching out or anything like that. Kind of weirdo vibes, <laughs> if you want me to be honest. <laughs> all right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I want to wish you guys all the very best. Stay tuned for tons of new spell videos as well as tons of new readings. I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye-bye.